Hi, it's Miss Patty. I'm so glad that you're able to join me again today. I am so happy we're in April. It's one of my favorite months. And the holiday that we celebrate is Earth Day. It started a really long time ago, uh, 1970. April 22nd is the day that it's celebrated in 1970. And so many things have happened uh, since this holiday has been uh, started. Laws have been passed and people really have uh, made a difference in their lives to go ahead and help protect the earth. It could be as simple as turning off lights, um, using less water, planting a tree. Uh, there's so many things that you could do. Also, just reuse items. If you see, they might have another use. Uh, just reuse them. So I hope uh, you get to go ahead and celebrate in a very special way Earth Day. Every once in a while what I do is I take just a plastic bag and I go around my neighborhood and I just kind of pick up the trash in my neighborhood. Sometimes it's kind of like rolls around and um, it gets stuck in the trees. So I like to do that. Uh, maybe you can find your own very own way of going ahead and celebrating Earth Day and helping our Earth. Trees are really important in our ecosystem. Uh, they help us and the critters around us in so many different ways, ways that I wouldn't even have imagined until I had read this book. I want to read it to you today. It's called The Great Capoc Tree, and it is a tale of the Amazon rainforest. And it is written and illustrated by Lynn Sherry. She is amazing when it comes to illustration. You're going to love it. And uh, this book really went ahead and gave me a good indication of how important the rainforest was, the trees in it, and how many ways it benefits us. Let's read it together. The Great Cape Hawk Tree, A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Lynn Sherry. When we open it up, it gives us a map of the world and it shows where the green is, that's where the rainforests are. The biggest one being over here in the Amazon, Amazon rainforest in Brazil, in South America. There's some in Africa, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, New Guinea, and of course, over in Australia. But where the Great Barrier Reef is, those two are together. In the Amazon rainforest, it is always hot, and in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. The animals that live there like lots of light. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. The animals that live in the understory like darkness. There, silent snakes curl around hanging vines. Graceful jaguars watch and wait. And in the steamy environment, the great Cape Hawk tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is a story of a community of animals that live in one such tree in the rainforest. We want to give thanks to Houghton Mifflin Harcourt for allowing us to read this book. <clears throat> Two men walked into the rainforest moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great capoc tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the ax he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great capoc tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the capoc tree. 
He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senors, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree and then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawk the toucan. You must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on this land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear, Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from the branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And, Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had been climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground, plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes on? A child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. 
The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped. He turned and he looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and he walked out of the rainforest. What a different decision he made after he went ahead and found out what a wondrous, beautiful place the Cape Pock tree was and how important it was for all of the animals' lives. There's a letter from Lynn Sherry for everybody, and it says, Dear readers, I wrote the great Cape Pock tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The Great Kapok Tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest. But we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth together. We can make a difference. Lynn Sherry, to see the letter there written by her. And then the picture again at the end of all the places in the world without rainforests. I hope you enjoyed the great K-pop tree. Lynn Sherry is an amazing artist and writer and she's an environmentalist. And I love the letter that she wrote us uh, to take care of the earth, the rainforest, the ones from outside of here and the ones here in the United States. It's amazing that the Amazon rainforest provides us with so many things. It provides us with medicines, food, all types of food, avocados and coffee and vanilla. It provides us with oxygen because it makes oxygen for the world and of course wood for furniture. So we definitely need the rainforest to go ahead and for our lives, but also protecting it is as important. I will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful Earth Day celebration and Earth Day month. Bye.